Hi, my name is Alan Troisi. I'm one of the application engineers here at Lakos Filtration. Today I'd like to talk to you about our multi-tower switching kit. The multi-tower switching kit allows you to sweep up to four cooling tower basins, one at a time, with one Lakos filtration system sized for a single tower. The package itself is comprised of a main control panel and two valves that are installed at each tower. The question would be is why would you want to use this? There's three basic reasons. Number one, energy savings. The multi-tower switching kit allows you to size a Lakos unit for a single tower and then allows you to switch between multiple towers with that single unit. Therefore, using a smaller system, saving energy. Second reason, scalability. One Laco system can be used to sweep, say, two towers, and then in the future, if an additional tower is added, it can be wired into the same control panel up to four towers and be used to rotate through those towers. Third, seasonality. Depending on the cooling tower usage and maintenance during the off season, the Lakos unit can be, the multi tower switching kit can be used to, to turn off towers that are not in use or maybe down for maintenance while maintaining sweeping in primary or duty towers that as required. So now we're going to look at how the multi tower switching kit would work with a tower setup. So what you see here is a piping and wiring diagram for four towers. So you can see here, we have the Lakos unit with the multi-tower switching kit next to it. And then you can see uh, uh, headers and piping to each individual tower with each inlet and outlet connection having its own set of valves. This is the basic configuration of the unit where, and the system, the Laco system itself is sized to sweep one tower at a time. So this is what you see here in the diagram, very basic. It would be only a unit sized for one tower instead of having to size a unit for multiple towers. The other thing to, to notice, to note in this that there is no equalizer line required between all three of the tower or all four of the towers. If you had a single unit sweeping all four towers at once, it would be required that all four of the towers have a connection with an equalizer line. So this allows you to do a small, again, a smaller Lakos unit once per tower. If you need to take a tower offline, now you have the capability to take that, that tower offline and not affect any of the Lakos equipment. So a question would be is, do I have to do anything different with my setup when using the multi-tower switching kit? The answer is no. You would follow the same parameters that Lakos already recommends for installing a sweeper, uh, sweeper piping system. Basically, your system, your, your Lakos filtration package, would still need to be located within 20 feet of the towers. It would be piped per the Lakos recommendations as far as the inlet and outlet piping to and from the unit. Um, in most cases, this would use, again, a header design uh, with branches going out from the header to each tower. Um, you would still need the flooded suction. That doesn't change. Um, and then all you would do is simply install the valves in the piping to and from each of the towers, and then locate the controller near those or wherever you want to do it, near the Lakos unit or you know, closer to the towers, depending on how you want to wire it up. Other than that, there's no other changes. Uh, again, it's very simple installation, makes things very clean and easy. The multi-tower switching kit is a great aftermarket installation option. Um, this can be installed very easily in an existing layout, existing towers, and can make it very simple to, to bring in a Lakos unit into an aftermarket application. Some of the things you need to consider when you're doing this is, number one, you need to have a separate power source. Um, the Lakos multi-tower switching kit can be located next to or near the Lakos system, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. It can be located closer to the towers, depending on where your power feed is, and all your wiring to that can be done you know, closer to the towers. So now we're going to cover the basic components of the multi-tower switching kit itself. The first part we're going to talk about is the brains, which is the controller. The controller itself here comes in a NEMA 4 enclosure box with this face plate. You'll see this in every one. The cover box, the door cover will be a clear 
a clear panel so that you can see inside, so that you can see the Zelio and the other items. This is the Zelo Smart Relay. This is the brains behind the controller that does all that has all the programming in it. There's a power on off switch to turn the main power on. There is a timed and continuous switch, which we will discuss further along. And lastly, there's a power light so that you know the system is on. The next question that comes up is how do I power my box? This box requires a separate 120 volt power source to be supplied from a separate lead. It cannot be supplied from the Lakos controller, uh, system controller itself. It has to come from a separate 120 source on site. As far as remote monitoring, this is a standalone system and there's no remote monitoring capability. So this could not be tied into a building management system or anything like that to monitor, change, or control. This all has to be done manually and at the controller itself. The second component in the multi-tower switching kit is the valve and actuator itself. This is represented by this valve itself here that shows that it, we have a valve with a, a butterfly valve with an electric actuator. On top of the electric actuator, you will find a open and close indicator. So that will be able to tell you if the valve is opened or closed. The valve itself is a cast is a duct iron epoxy coated body with an EPDM resilient seal to seal it off when it's closed. This valve can be wired for either 120 volt or 240 volt depending on the voltage available in the field. Most commonly 120 volt is typically provided to the controller and then out to the valves. All wiring to from the controller to the valve itself will need to be provided by another source.